This Colombian color emerald rough comes from a laboratory in Russia, and it was quite challenging for me to get this hunk of rough, as the company is used to working with large gem cutting companies in Europe and Asia, but not small individual cutters. The good news is that they would love to have a market in America, but currently they're just in Europe and Asia. So they were willing to work with me, but it still took a while. About three weeks of emails back and forth before we agreed on what color and size, mainly depth of brush rough I wanted. I was looking for a slab as deep as possible so I could cut, cut relatively larger stones. I decided to go with this piece of rock that is nearly 12 millimeters deep. Those few labs around the world who are able to create emeralds in the lab all offer about two basic colors of emerald, the Zambian color and the Colombian color. Zambian is what I had before and it is darker and makes great looking emerald gemstones when cut. Colombian is lighter and to me more vivid, more of a vivid green, and it also makes great looking gemstones. Since I had tried Zambian uh, with the first batch of emerald rough that I had obtained, I wanted to try Colombian this time. So after agreeing on a piece or slab of rough from my friend in Russia, came the process of shipping it. Jeez, weeks go from Russia to the USA. Five weeks from Novosibirsk, Novosibirsk, Russia Federation, to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Heck, the quickest part was the US Customs, which only took one day in Chicago. Anyway, the slab finally arrived, and I can't wait to cut it. It does have some inclusions, a few more inclusions than the previous slab that I had obtained from Chatham, but nothing compared to inclusions that normally occur in natural emerald. So I can work with this slab. These are the two colors that lab created emerald gen generally comes in. The smaller piece is of Zambian colored emerald rough that I got from Chatham. And of course my new slab is Colombian colored emerald rough. Not sure which color I like best. And what I want to do is uh, I want to cut it right there. That'll give us a nice, uh, couple of nice clean pieces. And I want to cut it right along here. This will give us one really big nice piece and then uh, another trim piece left over, smaller piece that I'll cut a smaller emerald with. Okay, now to clean your trim saw up, you dump the water out, spin dry the blade, and wipe it down and to be ready for the next use. Okay, I have the two pieces of rough I want to cut. Now for a design. I think I will cut these two gemstones into a design by Norman W. Steele that he called Princess 144A. This design was originally published in the Seattle Fasteners Guild newsletter in January 1981. You can also find this design at fasteningdesigns.org and let me show you how to find it there. I think this design looks like it will cut an awesome looking emerald. Let's find out. Now don't let all the information on one of these gem cutting designs confuse you. I made a two part video and explained all of the information on these designs. Take a look at these videos if you want to better understand the information and instructions. So if I cut these emeralds correctly, they should look like this from the top, side, and bottom when I am finished. I finished preforming the larger piece of our lab-created emerald uh, with the 320 topper. So, just wanted to see where we're at. So I haven't closed out the culet yet, so I either have to make the stone smaller or 
cut down further to close that up, but we're almost there. So the question becomes, do I have to make the stone smaller? Well, so is there enough space for the pavilion and the crown given the width of the stone? So the stone right now is 15.3 uh, millimeters, the nice big stone. It, it's got to be made smaller anyway um, because there's right there, we're not yet in far enough. So we've got to cut in a little further. And there's a couple of inclusions on the surface that I want to get rid of, but well, we're almost there. So it's around 15, but anyway, 15.3. And if you go to the instructions, the diagram, it gives you the P to W and the C to W ratio. The P to W is the pavilion to the width, and that's 0.526. So you multiply your width of the stone, 15.3, times the 0.526, and you get 8.04. And that's how many millimeters you need for the pavilion. For the crown, it's 0.14 times the width of the stone, 15.3, which equals 2.14. Uh, so you need 2.14 millimeters for the crown for this bottom part. Plus, you need to add in uh, enough for a girdle of about 0.3. So altogether, if the pavilion's got to be at least uh, 8.04, the crown's got to be at least 2.14 millimeters, and you add about 0.3 millimeters for a girdle, you end up with about 10.5, 10.5 millimeters. So if I set my measure at uh, 10.5 millimeters, then I just want to find out if I have enough space um, to cut the stone, and I do. So there's, there is enough space to cut the stone with the pavilion, the crown, and the girdle, and have a little bit of wiggle room um, right there. So I'm fine, uh, so I don't need to make the stone smaller to close out this culet. I just need to cut down a little further. So I'll probably cut down and cut out this, uh, this most of this inclusion here is cracked. Then I'll cut in a little bit to get rid of this. This is, this is uh, showing like a polish because I haven't touched it with our 320 which means I need to cut in a little bit further, but I'm still at 15.3. I think I can still stay above 15, and uh, we'll work from there. So now what I'm gonna do, since I've finished with the uh, 320 grit, and I've already got the 320 grit topper set up, I'm just gonna use, take advantage of the tiered dot feature of the AlterTech and sw switch out stones. So. My second emerald that I want to cut, I'll just put that in place, and it only goes it goes in one way. There. So we'll lock it in place, and then when I have to go back, well, then when I go to the probably 600 grit, and I'll cut 320 with this, and then the 600, and then I'll switch back uh, to my first stone with the 600 and it'll go right back in and it'll go because of that tiered this uh, cut on the top it's going to go right in place and I'll be able to pick up where I left off after the 600 after the 1200 I probably will not switch out laps uh, I'll just continue on from after the 600 with the uh, my 12M, and then uh, to pre-polish and polish. So we'll cut the same design with this little bit smaller piece of uh, emerald. It looks pretty clean. Finished uh, preforming our smaller piece of emerald um, using the 600 grit uh, topper. So now I'll switch back to the larger 
emerald and continue with the 600 before uh, changing laps. So this is about, it's a little bigger than nine millimeters right now. Um, and and the, uh, there's an inclusion right there. So I've got just enough for the crown so I can't cut down a whole lot more, so maybe a little bit more. Uh, but I'm thinking this is gonna end up in the neighborhood right at uh, nine millimeters. I may have to come in a little bit, but I'm over nine millimeters now. I may bring it into nine millimeters to get this inclusion cut out. I'm not gonna leave that in there because uh, it's so near the surface. It looks like I can get it out without a whole lot of loss of rub. So now we'll switch stops and back to the uh, larger uh, piece of emerald. Okay, I'm working with the uh, girdle of our larger lab created emerald and the 10M lap. Um, I've been switching laps back and forth, switching stones uh, using the uh, keyed dot feature of the Ultratech with the, uh, the way the dots are that you can swap them out without losing your place. So um, that's resulted in me having to change laps left less often. So now I'm in the 12 M I'll probably continue on with this stone until I polish. Even though I can switch out dops, I don't want even a minor adjustment, a malalignment to cause any problems later on. So I was hoping the stone would be about 15 millimeters. There is a chip inclusion that I have to work out. I have just enough space to make the crown, so I really can't cut this down, you know, cut the uh, these facets, moving the girdle down to get rid of this inclusion. So the only option left is to move, cut the girdle, more girdle facets, and move in to get rid of this inclusion, which is gonna make the stone slightly smaller. It's gonna be, 14 millimeter range instead of 15 that I was hoping for. And I don't mind leaving in any inclusions that are in this stone, any minor inclusions. However, that one's not not acceptable. That's a that's a chip. I wouldn't want to leave the stone with that in it. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, slightly make the stone slightly smaller, cutting our girdle facets. All right, ready to start the uh, final pre-polish with three thousand grit diamond on a bat lap and uh, so the there's a tiny tiny bit yet to close up on the culet we'll get that closed up there's a tiny tiny piece on the girdle that chip tiny piece left right there I don't think you can see it but it's there we'll take clean that up now as far as the instructions go, the instructions on the girdle were to you cut 48 facets every, which is every other tooth on the 96 uh, tooth index gear. For some reason, this, this is a, I've cut, I've cut a couple Norman Steel designs and the same on both of them. The Greek cross was the same way. For some reason, he, well, he likes to design them, I guess, with, uh, 48 girdle facets. So when I cut this, I did not cut 48 girdle facets to start with. When I was uh, preforming it, I just cut every six. So only 16 girdles, 16 facets on the girdle to mess with instead of 48, saves a lot of time. Same when I went to the 600 grit, same when I went to the uh, 12M, uh, well, the 600 grit, then the 12M, I went ahead and did all 48 facets uh, on the girdle. And uh, so I would say, don't, don't worry about the girdle facets, doing 48 of them, do every three of them. So it's every, every six tooth instead of every other tooth until you get to the finer laps. That way you don't waste time uh, on the girdle. 48 facets is a lot of facets. So the other thing, don't cut the first uh, set of instructions to a to a center point, there's no need uh, because each set of instructions cuts the angle in deeper. And now that I've done the, the uh, 
my 12M lap. Like I just showed you, it's just right at closing off that culet. So there was no need to cut the first set of facets with our you know, 320 grit preforming to it to a, a temporary center point, no need at all. So now we'll, we'll hit that center point right at the uh, 3K diamond on that lap base. So that's how I would approach uh, this diagram. I finished polishing the uh, larger of the uh, created emerald with uh, tin lap with cerium oxide and it uh, polished up beautifully. Color's great. There are some internal inclusions, not very many. It's a good looking emerald. So I'll transfer it with our transfer jig and get ready to cut the uh, crown part of that. In the meantime, I'll work on the smaller of the uh, two emeralds. So, I just wanted to show you this uh, sponge. The purpose of the sponge in my, in my drip pan is to prevent the water um, when I'm cutting the girdle of the stone and I have the uh, stone at 90 degrees, uh, I have to lower the drip pan here to get the stone to uh, touch the lap. And without this, water would come out. So right now there's no water. There's no water coming out at all, not splashing anywhere. See, there's one drop on my uh, machine. And before I started using this sponge, without the sponge, you can, there, there's water coming out. So that's the purpose of the little sponge. Doesn't affect the uh, machine at all. It doesn't cause the, the strong Ultratech motor to burn up or anything, but it, it does really prevent uh, water from splashing everywhere. So that's why I use that sponge if you ever wondered. So I'm working on our smaller uh, emerald with the uh, 12M lap. Well, smaller, it's still going to be nine, nine millimeters large stone, but smaller than the other emerald. So this one has an inclusion right there, which is because the way the inclusion is shaped is going to, if I leave it in there, it's going to be very noticeable. I don't, I don't want to leave it in there. And it's near the surface, so I'm going to cut that out. I still have enough room to even to move down about to there and still leave enough uh, space to cut the crown and table if I need to. So I've cut the uh, first set of instructions, the first tier, and then the next tier is, is going to bring this facet all the way down to here in like a, a point. So I think this second facet, we'll see if that gets rid of this inclusion or not. If not, and the third won't do it, then I'll go back and I'll go down further. And if that still won't get rid of the inclusion, then I'll cut the stone in a little bit on the girdle. It's still, right now it's a little over nine millimeters, so it's gonna end up nine millimeters. But I don't wanna to have to cut the stone smaller if I don't have to. So for now, I'll just, I'll just see if that, uh, if I've cut it enough down already to get rid of this uh, inclusion. We'll see. All right, I finished uh, pre-polishing our smaller of our emeralds with uh, 3000 uh, diamond grit on a bat lap. And now I'll move to polish the pavilion with the uh, tin lap with uh, cerium oxide. There you can see that that nasty inclusion on the pavilions now gone and I still have enough space to cut the crown so we're all set so far so far so good okay I finished polishing our smaller emerald with uh, tin lap and cerium oxide it polished up wonderfully so now I will transfer it and uh, cut the uh, the upper part of the crown okay so I'm ready to transfer our uh, 
emerald. You can see in the bottom of the dop, I've put a little bit of uh, blue modeling clay to help protect the culet. In this case, I'm gonna use uh, super glue. I use the uh, Loctite 404, keep it in the fridge and discard it after one year. So it's gonna put a drop there, push the top onto the bottom, tighten up the transfer jig and turn it over so that the super glue gets on the stone as well as the dop. Make sure there's glue on both. And uh, I'll watch it for a minute, make sure the glue doesn't run. The super glue sets up very fast. You can see uh, the uh, two-part epoxy runs a little bit, but as long as it doesn't get up here, it's okay. And as long as it doesn't get onto the girdle. So you can see there's a little bit of super glue all along the dop and on the stone, so it's uh, just where we want it. So I'll let that harden up and we'll be ready to uh, start cutting the uh, crown. Okay, to set the uh, dot into our spindle to cut the uh, second half, the top part or the crown of our larger piece of emerald, uh, first you set the angle to 90 degrees and then what you do is there, there were girdle facets cut every two teeth. So at the 96 tooth, there's a flat girdle get past it. So you put your tooth of your index gear at 96, and you, you get a precision square piece of metal. This one comes with the Ultratech machine, and this one I bought uh, on Amazon to raise things up a little bit, otherwise, I was having to put my head kind of almost in the drip pan to see. And what you do when you raise the spindle, you see the break along that facet should, should be even. You should see sunlight even under it if you're lined up correctly. Otherwise, you have to adjust uh, before you tighten up the, uh, the set screw. Now, um, so I think I'm in alignment. The problem with the, the, this design is that uh, Norman Steel instructions call for 48 girdle facets, so they're very small. So I could be off a little bit and not even notice it. So, the, But I'll know as I start cutting because cutting instruction A makes little back-to-back -back triangles all along the first row of facets going down to the girdle. And where they go back-to-back, -back, the one with tooth 3 and tooth 93, the line between them where they go, where they touch back to back should hit right in the center of the 96 facet. So that'll be the other way that I can check this. But uh, yeah, it, it, I've cut a couple of, of designs by Norman Steel and they're both, they've, they've all been both, I think that they're cut two. The same thing, 48 girdle facets, which is a lot of work. I'm not sure I like it. Maybe that's, he likes the way that makes the girdle lay out. Maybe that's what makes his designs uniquely his. I don't know. But it's a little challenging to line up the girdle. But I think we've got it. Finished polishing our larger emerald, the crown. Now I'll remove it from the top and I have left to polish, cut and polish the table. I'll hold off on that till I finish the smaller emerald then cut and polish both tables one after the other. That way there's only one setup. So now I'll uh, remove this one from the dop and finish cutting and polishing the crown of our smaller emerald. Okay, finished polishing the crown of our smaller emerald, and now I'll take it off the dop, set up the uh, Ultratech to cut the table, and I'll cut the table and polish the table of both of our emeralds, and then we'll be done. I finished polishing our two lab emeralds, Colombian color. The smaller one looks kind of dwarfed, uh, but it's actually 8.3 millimeters. It's pretty large, and the, the reason it looks so small is our bigger one's uh, about 14 and a half millimeters. So let's, anyway, let's uh, soak them in acetone, get them off the uh, dops, and then I'll uh, more accurately measure them and weigh them, and then we'll send them to Bopies. I found the princess design to be straightforward and is suitable for a new cutter. 
except for those 48 girdle facets. They make it a little bit more challenging, especially to align the crown with the pavilion, but nothing major. This design does not have a level girdle, so that will be a bit of a twist for a new cutter. And regarding those 48 girdle facets, my recommendation would be to just cut 16 girdle facets every six tooth on the 96 tooth index instead of every other tooth while you're using your laps all the way from pre-forming until you are at the pre-polish stage and then cut every other tooth or 48 girdle facets. That'll save you a lot of time. Overall, this is a fun design to cut and I think it looks great in vivid green gemstones like these creative emeralds. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the princess design and of these two gemstones. Happy faceting, everyone.